everyone welcome back to my channel so if you are new here my name is B and I am a fully qualified actuary uh, a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries so in today's video we will talk about the path to become an actuary and the desired skill set for aspiring actuaries from entry level to experience levels so if you are interested in learning more about the actual profession and other math related careers make sure to subscribe to the channel <music> Join me today for this topic is Anika, uh, an actuary and also a career coach. Hello everyone, uh, I'm really excited to be sharing this platform with me today. My name is Anika Gupta and uh, I'd like to begin with a quick introduction. I'm an actuary turned career coach and financial planner. And uh, you know, here is a short story to tell you all about my journey from college student to an actuarial professional to you know, a career coach and a financial planner as of today. So this was a conversation that I had with my father while I was pursuing my graduation in mathematics. And you know, one fine morning, he asked me this question, Anika, tell me, what is two plus two? Now, my father and I used to have a lot of witty conversations. So, you know, I knew the mathematical answer to this question, but I know this wasn't that straightforward. So I replied to him, well, uh, I can make it whatever you want it to be. And, you know, he, he laughed. Now, he was someone who knew my level of intellect. He knew that, you know, I, I am someone who loves challenges. And he really, you know, persuaded me to pursue a course in actuarial science because he knew that uh, the course is tough, but it definitely aligns with my caliber. So that's how, you know, I started actuarial science. I completed a few papers initially and then started my corporate job. But things took a turn from there. Since childhood, I wanted to be my own boss. So after gaining some quality experience, I left my corporate job to pursue my entrepreneurial ambitions. That is how I started my company, that is iQuant, which means I quantify people's risk and provide you know, personalized financial planning services. Apart from that, you know, I, I definitely uh, had quite an interesting journey uh, from being a college student to getting my first job. And therefore, I started an initiative as a career coach to help other aspirants, uh, you know, navigate through their careers. In fact, even professionals to, you know, uh, face, you know, the challenges in their careers. So I've been helping them. And recently I've also started working as an actuarial tutor and I'm glad to have made uh, such a difference. So actually deal with risk and estimates. So technically with certain assumption, we can include various level buffer to make the total to be somewhat whatever, uh, like Anika mentioned. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting story. So it gives the impression that we are not purely mathematicians and do pure calculation, but it also involves business requirements as well. So to become an actuary, you need to be credited by an actual organization. And that often means that you need to pass a set of exams or gain credit for the exam from your studies. So the typical steps include first, have a bachelor degree. Actually, this is optional, uh, but it will help you to get a job. Uh, it can help if you choose major in math or statistics, actual science, business, finance, or economics, but it's not required. Uh, these days, there are approved university programs uh, in actual science that give you credit for exam as well. And you see by enrolling in a university or a college uh, with their career center, it will be able to help you to develop some uh, interview skills or some network working skills or uh, to have uh, participate in extra activities uh, on campus or off, even off campus that can help your chance to get a job easier later on. The next step is get an extra internship or co-op job if you can while being a student. Uh, passing one actual exam will help uh, to show that you are serious about this profession. Although there are many students who can get an internship or co-op job without exams, uh, of course, uh, they need to have other qualities to be an attractive candidate. And the third step is get a full-time actual job and continue to study and work at the same time. Uh, often companies will pay for your exam and give you some time off to study for your exams. Although this is also one of the challenges about being an actuary, uh, have to stay motivated uh, between working and st studying continuously. But this really gonna pay off after you become a 
fellow or an associate uh, of the actuaries. And you're going to continue on uh, to pass enough exam to get an associate level. So for some countries, you also need to have relevant uh, working experience uh, locally. So for example, in Canada, uh, often uh, to become an associate at the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, you need to have one year working experience in Canada. And you can stop at the associate level or continue uh, writing more exam to become a fellow. So being a fellow, of course, can give you more options, but there is still great demand uh, for the associate level, especially in consulting or non-traditional actuarial roles. Uh, and for Canada to become a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, you need to have Canadian working experience and also a fellow of either the Society of Actuaries, the Casualty Actuary Society, or the Institute of Faculty of Actuaries, among other organizations. So in order to become a well-rounded actuary, it is very important that you develop both hard and soft skills beside passing on the exams because at the end of the day, the actual profession uh, is still considered to be uh, a business job and we mostly work in um, the practice, uh, practical fields and, in, and not like academic uh, areas. Uh, next, Anika will talk about the different uh, skill set for the entry, uh, entry level actual roles that can help you to break into the actual field and get your first experience. are very, very important for you as an actuary professional. Actuaries are dealing with risks, they are dealing with uncertainties, and to be able to, you know, really identify, quantify, and bring uh, those solutions, there is a wide spectrum of skill sets that are required. I essentially want to talk about two types of skill sets today. The first one is technical skills. Now, technical skills are the abilities and the knowledge that is required for you to be able to perform an actuarial job. Uh, so, usually, you know, for entry-level aspirants, they clear a few initial papers before entering the corporate world. So, you know, they clear two to three papers uh, at least. And this really helps to build a basic understanding of the actuarial concepts and, you know, the know-how of a few terms that we generally use in our work. Now, you know, talking about the development of these skills, I would say it's very important not only to know concepts, for example, you know, time value of money or, you know, how discounting works. Uh, I would say it's very important for you to actually understand all of these concepts, understand the working behind these concepts, the logics, the principles, the methodologies, which would essentially really help you, you know, align them with practical work. So that would be, a, you know, a technical skills. Under technical skills, there are also, you know, software skills. Now, software skills also help you, you know, do uh, the modeling part of the actual work. Now, actuaries, given that they're dealing with risk, they're dealing with uncertainties, there are a lot of models that are built. Now, some of, you know, some of the software that is very commonly used would be, uh, I think, Excel. Excel is one of the most widely used tools for modeling. I would say basic knowledge would be really, really helpful. Moreover, you know, if, if you understand uh, VBA or if you're able to perform well in R, Python, all of them would also add a lot of value. Moreover, R is a software which has recently been uh, you know, added to the IEPOE curriculum as well. So I would strongly recommend you to at least, you know, at least have beginner level understanding. And if you can go on to the intermediate, that would be even more wonderful. The second type of skill set that I would really want to talk about are soft skills. Now, soft skills are skills that are important for you to be able to do the work efficiently, right? You must have heard about, you know, leadership qualities or, uh, you know, organizational skills, time management, you know, problem solving abilities. All of these come under soft skills. For entry level aspirants, I would like to talk about the three topmost skills that are really important. Number one would be effective communication. Now, under effective communication, I would say as an entry level aspirant, being a very good listener would be very, very important because at the entry stage, you are grasping a lot of knowledge, you are learning a lot of things. So it's very important for you to be an active listener. Secondly, it would definitely add value if you're a good speaker as well. And you know, you have to keep developing these skills because soft skills are one type of skills which will take years for you to develop. The second one would be uh, teamwork. So being a team player is really, really important. Actuaries, you know, there are, you know, the departments usually work in small teams. There, there may be, you know, smaller teams, maybe two people, two more than two people. In fact, yes, there are some actuaries who work independently as well. I would definitely recommend that, you know, you work, uh, you know, you're a good team player. That would really add value and that would really, uh, you know, 
again, help you develop good relationships right at the beginning of your career. The third top skill I would like to talk about is adaptability. Now, there is a huge transformation for, you know, uh, for, for actuarial professionals at the entry level from being a college student to entering the corporate world, the professional world. So if you are adaptable, if you are able to, you know, really get into, you know, the professional uh, corporate world with ease, that will again help you a lot uh, while starting your career. I totally agree with Anika about those uh, soft skills. As we progress further in our career, I would say communication skill will become increasingly more important. Uh, as an actuary, it's important to stay on top of technical knowledge and analytical tools, but it's also equally important to build non-technical skills. So the society actuaries has a competency framework that includes knowledge, skills, and behavior that SOA members have identified as necessary for actuary, actuary success. So they include communication, professional values, external forces and industry knowledge, leadership, relationship management and interpersonal collaboration, technical skills and analytical problem solving, strategic insight and integration, and resource-oriented solutions. I would say that from my professional experience progressing to middle management, developing resource-oriented solutions while building relationships are very important to one's success. So underlining this is having a strong business mindset. Knowing that you are not working alone in a company, uh, any solutions uh, that, uh, to that you have to develop will have an impact to a great number of people. And you need to consider different factors when recommending and uh, making a decision. And this is not an easy task uh, when you have a lot of different stakeholders uh, that will be impacted for, by your uh, recommendations. So as you progress further, Developing your leadership skills will become more important and uh, develop, uh, leadership skill is not only uh, when you actually have direct uh, people report to you, but it can also have uh, indirect uh, leadership uh, when um, and often indirect leadership is uh, much harder uh, because like that is how you can influence orders that are not reporting direct uh, directly to you. So you have to be able to convince and uh, to show them that there's uh, some uh, common interest and in, uh, like the goals that uh, you want them to work in towards will benefit uh, everyone. Now that you understand the different desired skill set of an actuary, how can one develop them? Um, Anika will talk about uh, the advice for actuary students to develop those skill set in school first. Development of skills is essential. We've all understood that. And now the question is, how do we do that? Now, if I have to give you my secret, that would be two words. Number one is participation. That is how you would start acquiring your skills. And number two would be practice which is how you would be developing the skill sets further. Now, let's talk about the first one, acquisition of skills. Now, you start acquiring skills you know, in school. You start identifying what are the things that you're good at, and you start this by participation. You essentially need to participate in all activities. There are, there are a lot of activities that happen in school, you know, right from classroom discussions to participation in extracurricular activities to sports. You know, there are so many things, dancing, singing, uh, everything. I, I feel that once you start participation in activities, you would, be st you would be actually setting the ground to start identifying what things you are good at. Right? This would be the first thing to do. The second one would be practice. Now, once you've identified your skills, once you've identified what are the things that you like, what are the things that you're good at, you start development on these things further. You start practicing more and more. Now, let me support this with a proper example. I'll be giving you my own example. Now, two things that I was really good at. Number one was I really enjoyed speaking. I felt confident. I really, I really liked it. And the second one would be I, I feel strategizing. So again, uh, something that I really liked right from you know, my school days. So once I identified these skills, I actually started participation and practice. So for my communication skills, like I told you, uh, I started anchoring. I started uh, you know, comparing. That means I started hosting shows in the school. So you know, I started from you know, uh, conducting classroom discussions to you know, participating in debates. I started comparing for uh, you know, cultural functions in schools. And that is how I actually developed you know, my communication skills further. There have been years of practice 
you know, uh, I must have practiced for at least eight years in school itself and then in college. The second one, uh, you know, I, I really liked, you know, organization. I liked strategizing and I identified my skill in playing chess. I was good at it. And, you know, again, with practice, you know, I knew how should I think, how should I organize my thoughts in order to win the game of chess. So, you know, to sum this up, once you start participating, you start identifying what good things you're good at. And then it's all about practice to make these, you know, to develop these skills further. I will talk a little bit further how you can enhance uh, your skill set when you are already uh, working. And here are a few tips that can help you accelerate your career. So first is continue development. Uh, be ready to always uh, constantly uh, look out for uh, de investing in yourself so that you can develop your skills further. And then you have to challenge yourself. You can only learn and grow when you continue to find things that are more challenging and that can help to push the your, your own boundaries. Uh, and last but not least is initiative. Express your desire to take on more responsibilities with your leader. Uh, this is a two-way communication. A good leader will want to help you progress, but it's not entirely their responsibility to push you on the tab uh, because they may not be sure if this is what exactly that what what you desire in your uh, career. And so you need to take initiative on your own. Find opportunities in short assignment or in volunteering at work or in actual organizations like the SOA, the CAS, uh, the CAA and more. Where are the struggles that students face to find their first job? I know this because I speak with experience as a career coach. I know this because I have faced it myself. Truth be told, my grades in college were at the top of the spectrum. I did a few initial papers. I had quality internships. I had a great resume, but I still faced rejection. And trust me, this rejection has taught me a lot. My advice to all entry-level aspirants would be never to fear failure because these failures will teach you a lot more than success would ever do. As a career coach, you know, uh, throughout my journey of helping aspirants to find their first job or even professionals to find a new job or switch their careers altogether, the important thing that I've noticed is, yes, people make mistakes, right? That's all right, because once you make that mistake and you learn from it, you know where you might be going wrong. I have made mistakes too, and I've actually identified every mistake and created a five-step blueprint that I you know, teach and train students to help them become job ready. So the thing is that yes, there's a lot of competition there. You, 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 know, you will have your peers or your friends maybe getting jobs before you, but that is all right. Okay. That is all right. It's okay if you get rejected. Just learn from them and things will definitely fall you know, in your stride. Please, you know, try to be positive. If possible, it would be really great if you can find yourself a mentor that can help you. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, this, this journey of finding the first job, it's, you know, it's an experience of a lifetime. So I'd say enjoy it, make mistakes and learn from them. Wish you all good luck and, uh, you know, I uh, hope, to, hope to know more, more stories, more similar stories and, you know, maybe talk about the struggles that you face. In the end, I'd like to wish all of you good luck. Good luck with your struggles, good luck with your stories. And if there's any way that I could help, please do let me know. Feel free to reach out to me, uh, you know, through various platforms. And I'd be happy to hear your side of the story and help you probably identify the mistakes and, you know, give you solutions as to how you can improve on them. I totally agree with Anika. Failure can make one stronger and failure doesn't define you. My other tip is to be patient. It may take a while to get your first job or to get to the next level, but if you continue improving yourself, investing in yourself, even just one basis, point per day will help you much more over time. It's a long run game. You have 20, 30 or even 40 years in your professional career. There's always time to pursue what you want and grow further. So I hope uh, this video is helpful for everyone who's interested in the actual profession or who's in at the earlier stage of their actual career and looking to develop further. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye now. Thank you.